Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, we're taking a look at the top five singles on the Billboard chart from this week in 1981. Stay tuned. You're listening to a 3324 podcast quick hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. Welcome, friends, to this week's 3324 podcast quick hit. My name is Dean Legiro. Thank you so much for joining me. We really appreciate it. And if you enjoy our content, take the next step. Do us a favor. Find us on social media. We're at 3324 podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And go ahead and share our posts and, and share our, our podcast as well. It would, it would mean a lot to us. So, for this week's quick hit, I thought it would be fun to take a look back at the top five Billboard singles from November 21st of 1981. It's an interesting cross-section of rock, pop, and easy listening. So, let's get into it. Coming in at number five, this group epitomized adult contemporary music. Formed in 1975, this English-Australian duo, known as Air Supply, broke through in the U.S. in 1980 with the album Lost in Love. Hits such as the title track, Lost in Love, Every Woman in the World, and All Out of Love would introduce the American audience to Air Supply's brand of easygoing songs. Air Supply would hit the top five again with a single from their follow-up album, The One That You Love, with the chart hit Here I Am. Air Supply would have a few more hits, but was never really able to reach the top spot with their 1983 single, Making Love Out of Nothing at All, spending two weeks at number two, but not reaching that peak. Holding the number four spot, this group has the nickname of the world's greatest rock and roll band. Do you know who they are? Well, you guessed it. Or if you didn't, it's the Rolling Stones. The Stones kicked off the 80s with, with a curious album, Tattoo You. Consisting of mostly studio outtakes from the previous decade, Tattoo U was essentially cobbled together with bits of material that had been lying around, adding new vocals where needed and a few overdubs here and there. Between touring obligations and bickering within the group, there really was no time to come up with new material and the band wanted an album to tour behind. This patchwork of an album would end up not only being a critical hit, but a commercial one as well, going quadruple platinum. The lead single, Start Me Up, is as infectious as they come and would hit number two, but on this week it was on its way down the charts at number four, and it would be their biggest hit of the 80s. At number three, another classic rock band would join the Stones in the top five, and it was Foreigner, with their hit Waiting for a Girl Like You off their album, Four. Written by Mick Jones and lead singer Lou Graham, Waiting for a Girl Like You would eventually hit number two, and like the Stones would not be able to make it to the top spot. Now here's a fun fact. That atmospheric synthesizer intro that opens the track was performed by a then-unknown Thomas Dolby, who would have his own top five hit with She Blinded Me With Science in 1982. Foreigner would have their elusive number one hit in 1985 with another ballad, I Want to Know What Love Is. The number two spot for the week was held by another duo, Daryl Hall and John Oates, and it was the title track from their excellent album, Private Eyes. Much like Start Me Up, Private Eyes was also on its way down the charts, but it had hit number one for two weeks, and they would quickly have another number one hit just over two months later with I Can't Go For That. Hall and Oates would be one of the best-selling acts of all time with 29 top 40 singles, six of those hitting number one, and 16 top tens as well as being 2014 inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. An incredible achievement. At the number one spot is a song that spent a record-setting 10 weeks at number one, beating all challengers to the top and becoming the anthem in aerobics classes across the nation. Olivia Newton-John with Physical. 
Originally intended to be offered to Rod Stewart and rejected by Tina Turner, Physical would be Olivia Newton-John's fifth and final number one hit on the Billboard charts. But what an impact. It would be the most successful song of the 80s, and its innuendo-filled lyrics would result in the song being banned in some markets, but would also help Olivia Newton-John shed the wholesome image she had become known for, especially after the mega-hit movie Grease. Steve Lukather from 80s hitmakers Toto would also provide a tasty guitar solo on the track. Now, I mentioned earlier that Hall & Oates would have another number one hit not long after Private Eyes. Well, I Can't Go For That was that song that would finally unseat Physical and give Hall & Oates two number one hits almost in a row. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the top five from November 21st of 1981. This has been Dean with your 3324 podcast, Quick Hit. We will see you on the flip side. This has been a 3324 podcast, Quick Hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation.